Hey, we are starting a new letter today, 2 Timothy, great letter. So uh, get your Bible ready and let's go. All right, well, hey, thank you for joining us for this week's Bible study. We are in 2 Timothy. This is the second letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to his friend Timothy, actually a, a guy that he had led to the Lord when he was very young. He discipled him along, kind of mm -hmm. took him under his wing, a real mentor. As yep. a matter of fact, probably the number one uh, most mentored person by the Apostle Paul in two ministries. As a matter of fact, a little bit of the reason why he wrote the second letter to him was because Paul was going to be, uh, his life was coming to an end very, very shortly, and he really wanted Timothy to carry on the mission. Now, he couldn't carry on the ap apostolic mission. He, he was an apostle. Mm -hmm. But he wanted to carry on. I mean, Paul was leaving. Who's going to carry on his work? Timothy's one of those guys. Hey, you keep going with what I've been doing. You saw what I've been doing. Yeah. You keep going that. So that's one of the reasons he wrote to him. So Timothy's very, very special to the Apostle Paul. But some interesting background here. Uh, last week, we just finished First Timothy. And that letter was written to uh, Timothy because... Uh, Paul was delayed in coming in. Uh, Timothy was at the church in Ephesus. Mm -hmm. that there was some trouble in the church of Ephesus, and Paul sent him there. Timothy, you go there and pastor that church and, and solve these problems, false teachings, different things that were going on. You go do that. And Paul wrote that first letter to him because, hey, here's, here's what I want you to do as leading this church, how to act and how people should act in the church. And so he wrote that letter to him. Uh, after that, uh, Paul probably, we don't know exactly, five or six years after he wrote that first letter mm -hmm. to Timothy, uh, Nero uh, came, in, Nero was the emperor of Rome. He had, uh, there, there's rumors, we don't know exactly, but uh, they, they think that Nero started Rome on fire. What an idiot. <laughs> so Nero started Rome on fire, at mm -hmm. least some of the districts in Rome on fire. And he blamed the Christians for doing it. Yep. And so he kind of set these Christians up as being bad guys so that there was cultural, you know, the whole culture was kind of against them. So it gave, it, it kind of was a scapegoat for him to use Christians. But Nero went into extreme persecution of Christians. I don't know if it was the worst of all emperors. Uh, the one after him was pretty bad too. But uh, he certainly did try to destroy Christianity mm -hmm. and was, was horribly, horribly... Uh, abusive to Christians. Nero is the one who's all those stories you hear about lighting his garden with the bodies of Christians and just, skinning them. And, yeah, uh, I mean, horrible, horrible torture. You know, we read this, we talk about this as a historical fact. Some of that type of persecution is still going on in our world mm -hmm. today. And we in America, we kind of, we kind of miss it. You know, we kind of, uh, life is good for us and, and it's hard for us to imagine living in a real situation where Police are looking for you. For one reason. Because you're a Christian. Yep. And we are trying to get all Christians out of our culture. And, uh, and can you imagine? I'm not saying it won't happen here someday. It might. Uh, we can't even fathom it. But this was the, what was going on. So Paul was in, in the Roman prison for the second time. But this time, the first time he was there, he was under house arrest pretty much. He could yeah. have visitors come and stuff. Now he is actually in a dungeon it is damp. It is dark. He is literally in chains all of the time. Yep. He's got to go to the bathroom right over there and sleep right over here. And there's nothing there to, it was, just, I mean, a horrible, horrible environment, horrible situation. He couldn't, uh, people couldn't come and visit him anymore, at least not as much. He couldn't communicate with them. So he was in a dark spot. He also knew that he was going to be beheaded. He knew, he knew that his yeah, time was coming. Execution was coming. He knew he was being executed. So he was there in a Roman prison in chains waiting for his execution. And he writes this letter. I think it's the most um, personal thing. As a matter of fact, as we go on through the weeks going through this, there are times that are very, very touching. There are times that I feel my heart strings are pulled when I feel of where Paul is and what he's going through after everything he's done especially when it gets to the part where everybody's yeah. left me, yeah. you know, like, wow. And, and so that's, that's pretty hard. There's but. a lot of emotion in this letter. Like Timothy, I love you, yes. Timothy. This is how I'm feeling. I mean, more so definitely than any other letter, but mm -hmm. maybe more than any other topic, even in this letter is just yeah. him pouring out his heart. Right. 
Yeah, I think you find that in uh, wherever Paul wrote a letter to a person, not a church. Mm -hmm. Most of his letters were titled to a church. What do you think? Timothy, Tyson, Philemon, uh, these are... Tyson? Did I say Tyson? <laughs> Tyson, not the chicken company. <laughs> Titus. Titus and uh, Philemon. Yeah. You know, he, he wrote these letters personally to a person. Mm -hmm. So it is very, uh, very emotional, very personal. And so that's where we find ourselves. And as, actually, as we go through this, we'll remind you each week as we cover a little more that we really need to read it from that perspective. Paul, end of his life, he knows he's going to be put to death. And he is in prison. He's writing a letter. I, I often think, you know, what would you say your last words? And it's interesting that the last recorded writing from the Apostle Paul, who wrote so much, his last message is this one. Mm -hmm. uh, the last message, who would he write it to a church? No, he wrote it to the person that was going to take the ministry from him. You know, like, mm -hmm. hey, you need to carry this message on. And it's, it's, it's that kind of a letter... I oftentimes think there's not not a lot of doctrine in here. Why is it in the Bible? Uh, there's not a lot of teaching here. It's a personal letter, but I think it's really great. And as we go through it, we'll see some things as as what's sometimes behind closed doors when the cameras are off. What do you really value? Yeah. What's really important? Right. And you see Paul's and, heart. Yes. Here. I, I think here he's not on stage, right? He's... Uh, if he was just faking this Christian thing, you'd know it. You know, if if he wasn't sincere, you'd know it. But we find out here that he was. And I think that's the important part. And we're going to go through this pretty detailed, you yeah. know, over the next several weeks. But a few years ago, we actually did a whole message series on Second Timothy, and we called it yeah. Final Words. So you yeah. can go back on our YouTube channel mm -hmm. and uh, just search for those messages if you want kind of a more broad overview, mm -hmm. you know, before we get really far into and it. And if you know how to do that. <laughs> okay. You'll figure it out. Oh, it's easy. Anybody can do it. Okay, here we go. Uh, Paul's last letter he wrote to Timothy. He says, Paul, an apostle of, Jesus, of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. R really quickly, he says, hey, I've been an apostle, not because people thought I was important, not because I was popular. I was an apostle according to to the call of God that God personally spoke to me on that road to Damascus mm -hmm. and that he had an encounter with him. I'm writing this specifically to Timothy, my dear son. Again, last letter. I mean, these things are emotional. They are. Uh, he's not just saying to Timothy, my brother, he's really a son in the faith. And he goes on, he says, grace, mercy, and peace from God, the father of Christ Jesus, our Lord. I am going to be put to death here shortly, but grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father. I think it's interesting that Paul didn't think of things fair or not. He was going to be uh, murdered, but yet he didn't want Timothy to be. I want mm -hmm. God's grace. and I, You know what? My life's ending this way, but I want you to experience the fullness of God and, and, uh, and all of those things. Now, as we go into the next one, uh, they say one of the main reasons, and I don't know this for sure, but um, a lot of historians say that Paul wrote this letter to Timothy also because the persecution was so intense that he was really afraid that Timothy was starting to back down. He was a young man mm -hmm. pastoring a church with a lot of people saying he didn't have enough experience, saying he wasn't right. There were a lot of false teachers. Now, ima imagine yourself. <laughs> imagine yourself. You're sent by the Apostle Paul to lead, to pastor a church that has false teachers in it. And y the persecution of that all the time, constantly having to debate or, or prove the gospel of Jesus Christ when people are trying to bring in, no, you have to be circumcised. No, you have to follow the law of Moses. No, yeah. no, you don't. You know, it's stay, it's stay. That would beat you down. Mm -hmm. But now on top of it, you have the Roman government now. There's always been pressure from the Jewish, uh, I guess, side of things. But now there's pressure from the Roman government to stamp out Christianity. So Timothy here is leading the church. First one they're going to come and take is him. And he sees all over that per Christians are being persecuted terribly. You got all this. And Paul was afraid. He really was kind of thinking like, Timothy, don't back down, man. Don't give in. Don't 
lose your fervor. Don't lose your your intensity here. Don't be afraid of all these things. And so he goes on, and you understand why he says some of the things that he says. He says, I thank God whom I serve as my forefathers did, his forefathers did as Jewish believers, Mm -hmm. with a clear conscience as night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. Paul is praying for him to not lose the faith, to stay in it, to hang in there, be faithful. And he says, I recall your tears. When, when Paul had asked Timothy to go to Ephesus and their parting, Timothy was with Paul through all of his ministries, mm-hmm. you know, and, and through everything he's doing. And now he's asking Timothy to go. They had no idea if they'd ever see each other again. <laughs> yeah, he couldn't just call him up. Or... Yeah, he couldn't call him, text him, take a flight down. <clears throat> mm-hmm. They knew where their paths would ever meet again. So when they did depart, Paul's remembering those tears of uh, this young minister leaving the great apostle Paul and how how uh, how emotional that, that, that was, their parting there. He says, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. They were really good friends. He said, I have been reminded of your, of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And I am, de- and I am persuaded now lives in you also. Uh, his grandmother and mother were Jewish believers. And when Paul came and preached to them the message of Jesus Christ, they all believed immediately. Mm-hmm. They believed immediately that he was the Messiah. And he goes on in verse four, he says, for this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give you a spirit of timidity or really defined like as fear. Mm -hmm. God didn't give you this fear, Timothy. It didn't come from God. He says, uh, but what God gave you is a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. Here we see that the, Paul, you know, he just starts his letter, and he's, he's saying to Timothy, hey, listen, fan into flame that gift that was given you, the calling of God in your life, that when I prayed for you, you know, he brought him up, and, and they, they prayed for him, and God called him to be a, a minister, you know. And uh, Paul is kind of encouraging him here, saying, you need to fan that into flame. Man, if you, you you need to like God is not giving you that spirit. You need to resist this this persecution, this temptation, this fear that's coming on you. That I should get out of the ministry. <laughs> I should just quit. Forget this stuff. Yeah. Hey, uh, I mean nobody likes me anyway. <laughs> you know, kind of a thing. <laughs> you felt like that. Why, why am I doing this? You know, yep. nobody likes me anyway. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> so, have. Yeah. And so he's really encouraging. I can I can just see Paul sitting in this dungeon, and he's got this ink and this scroll and he's he's writing these things to Timothy I remember I remember when the Holy Spirit filled you I remember when you were gifted to do what you're doing fan that into flame be reminded Mm -hmm. of that again you know what I'm Mm -hmm. saying Mm -hmm. like hey this is crucial this is so important he then goes on to say in verse 8 I think we are right okay so do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord or ashamed of me, his prisoner. He says, Timothy, don't be ashamed of the gospel of our Lord. I know they might arrest you. They might burn you at the stake. They might. I don't know what's going to happen. I know that I'm going to be killed. But you know what? Don't be ashamed of Jesus Christ. And don't ever be ashamed of me. And people were. They are running away. They, I don't know, Paul. Kind of like when Jesus was being uh, you know, persecuted and, and yep. then crucified. If you're identified with him, man, we're locking you up too, you know, but he's, he's encouraging him. Don't be ashamed. Okay. Be bold. Don't be ashamed of it. I, I think of what Jesus said. Don't fear man who can, what can they do? They can kill you. It's the worst yeah. thing, but rather have reverence for God who can destroy both soul and body, you know, yep. like, Hey, Timothy, keep that in mind. Uh, he says, um, and don't be ashamed of me, but join with me in suffering for the gospel. Join with me in suffering for this good news uh, to the world. In other words, Timothy, don't think about your life and your comfort. 
join with me in this mission that is the most powerful, mm -hmm. the most important, the most eternal mission that you could ever be a part of. By the power of God, who has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything that we have done. Paul can keep that so... Underline. You know? Yeah. yeah. Not because of anything we have done. Timothy, we're not special because we're holier. We don't swear. That's yeah. not it, man. Yeah. It's by the power of God. He says, but because of his own purpose, God's own purpose and grace, that is why we are called to do what we're doing and don't give up. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the, be before the beginning of time, but it has been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus. I, I think this is great. We throw around this word so often. He, he says, this grace was given us in Christ Jesus. Before the beginning of time, it was God's plan. Yep. And now it's been revealed through Jesus Christ coming. And, and I think so oftentimes we just think that, you know, we receive God's grace because God's grace giving. We receive God's grace through Jesus. Only. Jesus is the only way that God's grace, God's salvation, God's forgiveness comes into our life. Mm -hmm. It is only through Jesus, not just God just arbitrarily, oh, I'm going to give you some grace and I'm going to give you some forgiveness. Yeah. He gives it all to us through Christ. Yep. And that he emphasizes not we deserved it in the past, no. not because of what we're doing now, not no. because of what we've promised him or anything like yep. irrelevant to any of our actions, anything we do, right? Right. And that God has shown us such incredible grace through Christ. And we don't have time to go into it now, but what <laughs> God has done for us through Christ, Christ's obedience has given us every spiritual blessing that there is from God. Yep. Every one of them. But uh, where did I leave off? Not because of anything we have done. We're past that. Uh, 10? No, nope, you're in 10. It's like the second half of 10. Oh, okay, we'll start with 10 again. But it, has, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the good news or through the gospel. Mm -hmm. Everything has been given to us and made known to us through Christ and the good news of, of what he did. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. Paul emphasized it again. And I can imagine Paul's reminiscing his whole life and everything he went through and all of that stuff and remembering, I wasn't called to this because I thought it would be a, a, a really good career to go into. <laughs> yeah. I didn't go into this because people thought I was a good speaker, you know? Hey, I was called by God into this, you know, mm -hmm. and he's just remembering it. His, his life is coming to an end now. It's over. Yep. Nobody's with him at this point, right? No, no. Maybe Luke. He says only Luke. Yep. Uh, and, and we're going to get into that. But it's just so, it's so touching. I, I feel just emotional reading it. It's crazy. Um, he goes on. He says, that's why I am suffering as I am. Well, let me put this straight. I am suffering as I am in chains, dirt, dirty, dirty, cold prison cell because God called me into his work. We could talk about that for a while. That is why I am suffering as I am because God's called me. This was God's will for my life. That's a mm -hmm. challenging thing, Mr. Olstein, Olstein, Olstein. What's his name? Osteen. Osteen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's go on. Yet I am not ashamed because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. I am not ashamed, even though I am being poured out here. My life is in. I am not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ because I know whom I have, I know that he holds eternity. He holds the future. He's trustworthy. He is trustworthy mm -hmm. that I will be with him forever because he has defeated death 
and he has, for, through his sacrifice, took care of all of all that I owe, all my penalty, and my faith and my trust is in him. And no, even if they take my life, I am not ashamed of Jesus. Jesus has done everything for me. Yep. And, and I just think as he is reminding himself, he's penning this to Timothy, this idea that, no, 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 there's no mistake here. No, 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 this is God's will. No, 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 this world has nothing to offer me. I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the salvation of God, and he is trustworthy. And I will, I will be blessed for that. And I never, ever regret one day of serving yeah, God. Right. And I think that's what he's saying is that I have never one day, Timothy, don't be ashamed of me. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. I have never been ashamed of one thing, nor will I ever. I know who am I believed. I know he is the savior. I know that he holds eternity. I know that I'm going to be in, in his presence, the presence of God. You don't and, lose sight of that either. <laughs> Don't you ever lose sight. Yeah. Don't ever, don't, you will never regret anything that you have done for Jesus. You will never regret If there's regret something it. I want to write down as my final words, don't That's lose it. sight of this. Don't lose sight of this. Yep. Anyway, yeah, we'll stop there. Sounds good. And uh, we appreciate you joining us. Go back and reread that and ponder that a little bit in your life, and we'll see you next time. Hey, we really hope that this video was helpful for you. If you'd like to stay up to date on our weekly content, Make sure to subscribe to our channel and click on that little bell icon so you can be notified when new videos are uploaded. And if you'd like to support the ministries here at Access Church and help make videos like this possible, there'll be a link in the description below. As always, we appreciate your partnership in helping us draw people into a growing relationship with God through Jesus Christ.